I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings. In the Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is, I miss that, that, that clown. I'm wow. proud of my address. Dude, that's pretty good. This is Big Lou, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha Pack, exploring their F3 experiences and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. So Khakis has been in F3 um, for a couple of years now, site queue um, of the district, and has really taken on a role helping to lead um, multiple Q schools throughout our region, just to bring guys up to speed on the little things, right? The little things that matter, right? Calling cadence and uh, saying those core principles and, and mapping out a workout. So you've just been instrumental in teaching guys some of those fundamentals. So we're excited to spend some time getting to know you. Um, but uh, Kathy, this is uh, near and dear to my heart, but tell us um, a little bit of the background. What, uh, how'd you get into F3? Uh, who we aged and um, what's the name khakis where did that come from all right well that's a that's quite uh that's quite a story to start with um well it started on a, a sunday on december 16th i was uh in the parking lot of high V with my steaks and bottle of wine ready to head home and, and do my usual grilling and have a glass of wine or maybe the bottle or maybe two bottles and three or four scotches, maybe 12 beers, who knows what uh, was on the menu for that night. And uh, as I was getting into my car, I got stopped by a guy I absolutely recognized, but couldn't remember his name exactly, but I knew where I knew him from. It was a, a, a co-worker of mine, a former co-worker's husband, and he just said, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to now? I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm back selling insurance. Oh, yeah. And then his second question was, well, what's your schedule like? And I thought, well, that's awfully odd thing to ask for the second thing. I said, I'm pretty flexible on sales. He goes, well, I work out with this group at 5.30 in the morning. I think you should come tomorrow. And it was like a Jedi mind trick. I just went, I should come tomorrow. All right, I should come tomorrow. And this was completely out of my comfort zone as far as 5.30 in the morning. Um, but he sent me a text, and then I looked up uh, Lauren. I went through, stalked all of her uh, Facebook pictures. So I found out, okay, it was Brandon, Brando. All right, Brandon. So I put that into my phone. Um, he told me where we'd meet, uh, just told me that it was outside and dress appropriately. It was December 17th of 2018. It was a chilly morning. I showed up and it was this thing called the Murph. I had no idea what the Murph was. Found out quickly. It was something that I could not do very well. Uh, it started out with a run tough then we got there and did push-ups which they called some other name and then we did squats which i was okay with and then pull-ups where i didn't even attempt to pull up i went over to the swing and pulled myself up on that swing a few times and then until someone yelled the next exercise then we ran back to the to the flags where it all started in the dark still dark uh they asked me some things about myself i tell them all these things i thought were pretty interesting i happened to mention i sell insurance and all of a sudden khakis as in state farm uh was thrown out it stuck um at least i thought it stuck until the next few workouts where i thought they changed it to the six because <laughs> uh, i was coming in as the last guy every time they said all right the six is in i thought not my name is Khaki, but whatever. The six, I'm fine. I was number six in high school, college. I was my number. So I was good with being called the six. And then I finally realized the six was the last man. But probably more importantly than that was that it was not just by happenstance that there was always someone running next to me. I always thought, oh, God, this guy's tired, too. He's coming next to me. Then I realized these guys aren't tired. <laughs> they could run laps around me. They were just coming back to make sure that I had someone to run with. Um, even as grumpy as I was, they still stayed back at least, uh, and ran with me. So that's a mouthful, but that was my story. Everyone in their lifetime will probably be the six, you know, maybe not for me right now, khakis, but maybe when I'm 60, like you, I'll be the six once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but the other, the other I do remember, I do remember. <laughs> I do remember a grinder at the at corn house or at uh, Futurama where you were kind of uh, huffing and puffing their pony. Um, uh, it was one of your first workouts and it didn't 
take long for that young pup to get into shape. But I remember you were huffing and puffing, and I was yelling at you, come on, keep up, keep up. <laughs> he's so he's gassed. He looks gassed in every neighbor on video I see him in, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, the last thing you got, just real quick, just <laughs> circle back, you touched on your naming. You know, honestly, I think khakis is awesome. I love it. I think it fits your personality because I know deep down you want something badass. Um, and khakis probably kind of hit, hit a little hard when you first got named that. Um, but it kind of goes with this thing. You don't get to name yourself, right? You throw out all right. these cool things. Uh, like I know uh, chicklets are throwing out like Dr. Death and I'm a dentist and Dr. Death got thrown out and and uh, before he could get named that, someone said, no, 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 no. Uh, he's already got a name. Uh, Khaki's named him, and it was Chicklets. <laughs> yeah, so, <I> was... <laughs> so, no, you don't get to choose your own name. And um, But I do. you do decide whether you take ownership of it or not, right? Uh, a great example is, uh, is Ketchup had his VQ, I believe, this morning. And uh, at the end of whenever he said his name, we would say, you know, ketchup, of course. And then I made that <laughs> sound and he so hated that. And so I stopped doing it. And then he's like, no, nope, I'm starting to own it. And so after his VQ today, he said his name, he made that sound. And so he owned it. Right. So I think uh, there's something to be said for whatever name you get, your, 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 your confidants gave that to you for a reason. Own it. I love that. Um, Khakis, you know, you've been in F3 now for, you know, this will be <clears throat> three years. Um, curious, just your, like, what are some of those favorite moments uh, of yours um, just throughout the, you know, the past couple of years? What's been some of the highlights for you? Well, one of the highlights that no one can really take away from us was that, that first core group, that first winner. Um, I didn't really realize it was a highlight as much the time as it was freezing cold and, you know, sometimes we're only five or six guys at a workout. We only had one workout a, a day, so that was it. And there was just one video to check in. Uh, I just want to make sure I was always in that video, and I was always at that site, whether it was 25 below zero or 40 degrees. And so some of uh, the more galvanizing uh, situations took place both in those workouts and then finally when those workouts were over and we were able to get to coffee. Right. And so that's true. When it was, I was, could not wait to get to coffee. It was so cold. I didn't dress appropriate. A lot of the times my feet were freezing. Um, but th those are some of my favorite moments. I think the one that you led in the garage with the green screen, where it was like 36 below zero before we got out of the car. Um, I, I just remember uh, just a lot of those early, early times. Uh, the second day I ever worked out, you you picked me up and, and took me took me to the workout. Then, then we started the paradise, started um, the Q source probably a month or two before I started. So I was really uh, in, and I remember uh, Point Break doing a Q source and bringing out this little kind of a seesaw thing and talking about balance and uh, and how it's not the traditional balance that we talk about. It doesn't have to be. 10 pounds over here and 10 pounds over there. It's just, it should be balanced though. Um, and I just remember that. I remember those times. Um, th those are the early times, the ones that stick a lot. Uh, obviously I remember when I was asked to do the district with Tater Todd, I thought that was a, a huge honor and laying down that flag. And I understand that this is a place that we were going to build and, you know, having it being passed on to, two guys like uh, the Freak and Chicklets, and now they're passing it on. Uh, it's a legacy we're leaving behind. Uh, there, there's, there's lots of stories I could tell, but those are just a few. That's awesome, man. I, I, um, it's just been, it's been really cool because like you, like you kind of mentioned, like um, you and I, we, we weren't necessarily like buddies or longtime friends or it was just like, mm -hmm. I know that guy and right. I, I'm going to see what he says. And, and I think um, – you know, just over time, you've just continued to lean in and engage and, you know, free to lead. I remember you leading some book discussions, Ego is the Enemy, um, trying to help get that going and just get guys kind of talking. And I, I think something I've always appreciated about you is um, you've leaned in, but you've kind of leaned into like the self-reflection part, right? The like, okay, I'm going to lean into the group, but I'm also going to do some work on my, on my own. 
um, when I'm not at a workout. And I wonder if you, you know, when you think about fitness fellowship and faith, um, where do you see yourself at today? Because I, I think you've, I mean, you've gone through a lot of changes, but where would you see yourself in those different elements? The fitness part, I remember that, that first morning I got home and the endorphins were just absolutely flying. I think it was one of the very first mornings I woke up uh, without a hangover. I worked out and I had to also be humble and tell my wife that she was right, that this group was F3 and that Brazilian was in it. And this guy, Blake, I didn't, even, I didn't know Blake. And she's like, oh, yeah, Blake's in this group. I know. He's, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me just go to my men's workout group. You just stay in your lane and I come back home. It's absolutely the group she was talking about, uh, that it was Brazilian down the street, Blake. Um, and so uh, that, first, that, that first day was realizing that I wasn't going to be to drink that night. And I was drinking every night and drinking more than most alcoholics would, would consider the, the proper amount. And so, but I just stopped. I stopped pretty much cold turkey. I do have some beers every now and then, but in order to do what I wanted to do, which was get up six days a week at 4.30 in the morning, being an older dude, I got to get those bones going a little bit, those knees popping a little bit. And so I had to get up and I realized that, you know, I couldn't stay up till midnight drinking, but I had to find a way to get to sleep. And it, it truly changed the way I looked at things, the way, the way I approached mornings. Uh, and the, the way that my mornings came was that workout coming home the kids were still asleep a lot of times or getting ready for school and I was there helping them and I was there for my wife and getting the beds made and, and breakfast ready and the kids off to school and then me off to work and it was just a whole different perspective uh, than I'd had before and so I started to see the pounds come off I started to see my head stop hurting um, and then I started seeing that I wasn't always being the six. Though so that group that we were with was some pretty in shape dude. So it was hard not to be the six in this group. But um, I did see myself getting in better shape. And one, I, I think that Plague and I are very similar in that we both have very addictive personalities to things. And once I got to this, I was addicted to it. I mean, I was addicted to coming and I was not going to miss. There was no way I was going to miss. I don't care. I'm going to set my alarm. There's no way. And so to this day, um, I've only woke up in Omaha probably three or four times and not gone to a workout. And, he, and all of them have been after, like, I think we did the C-SOP and then the triple morph the next day for Memorial. I don't know. It's, it was always, uh, as, they, as Taylor would like to call it, a smart sack. That I just decided that it was best for me to – to stay in that day. But even those days I missed the coffee, right? Uh, so when I had um, COVID and I had to kind of go undercover for about seven days, I, I, I missed it desperately that I'm, I'm addicted to it. But, and as much as, because I want guys to feel that it's okay. Cause that book, and, and I don't mean to, to jump around too much, but free to lead is so important. And I know Pony's on here and, and he's starting to read it and starting to see some things in there that he can relate to. Uh, and it doesn't have to be every single thing is like you're me because you're in a different part of your life than I am, right? And I certainly would have a different perspective if I was in my late 20s, right. early 30s. But that book felt like it should have my picture on the back cover and uh, my name throughout it because I was that guy. I was that sad clown. I was with really no friend friends, right? I mean, we talk about Chicklets, who's a dear friend, but I didn't have many others. And um, I seem to be happy. I have two homes, a lake house, a great job, a, a good home family that was healthy and all these things, but man, I was just not happy. And I, and I think I just want to tell folks, it's okay to say, I'm not happy, right? I, I put this face on that I am. And I remember one, one guy, um, and he said it in a circle of trust and, um, he goes, I don't have any friends. I thought, this guy is so nice, and everyone loves him. How did he have no friends? Sometimes with their growing pains. And instead of seeing that same group of 9, 10, 12, 14 guys every single morning, as we grow, you don't see those same guys as often. And you start to miss that, right? That, that friendship and that, that bond that you put together and finally admitted that you needed and wanted, it kind of dissipates a little bit in order for the, the group to grow. So 
kind of jumped around there again, but um, you know me, I can just get rolling. I love, I love that. And Kathy, there's a couple things that you've helped to really um, drive that, that I think have been just, just really, really cool. But like the, the khakis challenge, the polar bear challenge and, um, and the, and now the, the, the cacateria or, you know, the, the coffee at khakis. And I, and I, when I hear you sharing your, your passion for like, just, just like creating a, a forum for guys to come together and admit, like, I'm not happy. Um, and I want, but I want to get better. Um, I think that's, that's really cool. Cause you've really helped to ignite some of those things and get guys to go to other sites, meet some of the other guys, um, stay for coffee, right? I got a fire, a fire pit right here. You know, you don't have to be cold. Uh, so that I, I think that's, that's really cool. Um, where, where do you see yourself at with the, uh, the faith piece? Um, cause I know, uh, and I, I had just reached out and invited you to church and you reminded me that you, you go to church, uh, pretty regularly, but you know, where do you see yourself at just when you think about that third F or, I think for me being uh, a Catholic, raised Catholic my whole life, going to Catholic schools from first grade on through 12th grade, uh, Jackie, my wife, my M being the same, uh, attending Catholic church once I got out of school and now being part of Mary Our Queen Parish, raising our children Catholic. But my, I, I feel that my journey is, is I, I'm on that path and, and I'm comfortable with that path. What I like hearing are other people's um, view of what faith is right of what that third f is um i wrote a note to uh, a guy that's leaving today um blue suede and just talking about how his faith was was something i think that the group really leaned into right i mean you can only have so many guys you lean into for the, the fitness part there's only so many guys that you can be really tight to but to hear someone bring their faith out so so on their sleeve right and like yourself, uh, opening up your church and, and, and whether it is Greek freak and you guys, and, and I know that you chickle, it's now goes to church there that it's those guys that will put that faith on, on their sleeve and say, you know, if you don't have a, a journey, if you're wandering a little bit, there, there are some people. And, and I'm one of those uh, as a Catholic that I, I'm not overly, um, uh, critical of whatever faith you have but i do it's almost worse than the sad clown if you have no faith because right? if you have no faith then how are you going to get out of the sad clown at least when i was a sad clown i still had faith right mm -hmm. it's once you lose that faith and you don't have that faith that i think that you really have hit like the bottom level of the sad clown right that we got to get you that faith first and hearing, like, if you ever hear Slow Pitch's journey of faith, right? And just those stories where people have it, they just don't know it, right? It just needs to be drawn out of them. And uh, those are the ones that, that I like to hear. So, so again, I'm not, uh, I'm not evangelistic when it comes to my faith, as much as maybe yourself and some others. Um, Maybe I should be. Maybe the Catholic Church has done a poor job of that over the centuries, that it is not evangelistic. It doesn't. But I do see the Catholic Church asking people to come back, especially those who have, who have wandered. But I think the faith component is huge in just that you have faith in something. And I remember one of the first things when we started talking about faith and we'd been into it a couple months, I said, you can have faith in one thing. I'm going to be at the flag. When... When those five core principles are said, I'm going to be at the flag. You can have faith in that, right? And so I just wanted to give faith to my brothers of something. Just have faith in something. Absolutely. And I, I think um, the other thing you mentioned, too, is like just that journey. You know, it, it's and it's different for every one of us. We're all in a different spot. And so it's not like, you know, it's not like you start F3 and automatically you get all three Fs, right? It's, it, it takes time. And I think um, you referenced uh, kind of being involved in some of the really early, uh, before we were even doing QSource, um, I remember you coming to the discussions we were having at, at Paradise. And I wonder if you would be willing to share kind of your, um, you mentioned the free to lead stuff, but how other like second half book studies, Q source, that sort of thing, how has that impacted your, 
your journey the last couple of years? Well, I look at the at the free to lead and the Q source almost as like the, the Old Testament and the New Testament Bible in that um, I've read, I've, I haven't read a lot of books, but I've read free to lead twice. So that, right. And I've been to Q source now going on my third one and it's kind of like church. I mean, I'm going back, I'm hearing the same gospels, right. But it's different homilies, right. It's a different, I'm sitting in church with a different mindset, right. Just like a Q source, I can be at the same one. We could be talking about getting right, but I'm there with 15 different guys this time. And someone else is going to say something different that makes me think different. And so those who said, oh, I've been through QSource. Well, you haven't been through QSource with the same guys at the same time with this time in your life, right? It's like saying, well, I've been through a year of church, so we went through it. Well, you still go back. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're still going to have Christmas next year, right? And um, so I think that the QSource ha has given us really, it literally is just a platform for discussion. And it has some really good uh it's, really, it's a really good blueprint, and it gives you those discussions. But some of our best discussions of when we've, you know, kind of veered off of that blueprint and into some real guys talking about guys. You look over and you're like, I cannot believe that guy is sharing that right now. But you'd say that in a good way, yeah. right? Like, I can't believe that he's, he's – and you, you want to say weak, but you're actually you're extremely strong to be able to admit something, right? And – so it uh, so the Q source is something I rarely, if ever, miss. In fact, um, I've been known to hit two a week, hitting that Friday one as well, uh, because it's a different group of guys with a different perspective. Um, the the book, the free to lead. Now that we're doing, I, I rarely miss that, or I haven't missed it, and don't plan. I mean, I just and sometimes I just gotta hold myself back from speaking because I want to hear these other guys, but I think sometimes everybody wants to hear me, and that's just not the case. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I really do enjoy listening to other people's perspectives. I'm the same, and I know I know Pony and I we struggle with that too. Um, I want to hear because I think you you have really um, enjoyed the some of the structure, some of the elements of F3, which um, like like counting cadence, right? Or like there's a specific way that things should be done, and that has. Uh, accelerated your participation in Q school, which is super important. You know, I think one of the recent things I remember is you had done a Q school in Sarpy and the next workout I was at in Sarpy County, um, all of the guys were, you know, next exercise, you know, repeating the exercise, counting in cadence. And so talk to me a little bit about like what for you is the, um, why do you enjoy that so much? Why is that so special and important to you? I think it, because I was indoctrinated into it early with, with wait time being this is the way it's done, right? So I didn't know any different. This is the way it's done. And we only had one uh, side a day, and it was usually led by Redwoods at the beginning, and guys have been in it. And for, for all I knew, play also, I thought you'd been doing it for years, right, when you asked me. And I didn't know this group was really only six or seven months old when I started. So, but I, so I thought this was done well. In essence, it had been going on for years, just not here, right? And so Pony and I were just actually on a little walk run, pre-run. We weren't really running much. We were just sitting there talking, but we were talking about this. And, you know, the phone game we used to play as kids, right, where you'd be read a piece of paper and a story, and then you'd tell the person, tell the next story, to the next story. But if we did not reinforce our core principles, our mission statement, disclaimer, that that would be so distorted by the time it got to the the fourth or fifth, you know, AO. And that we'd be like, all right, we got principles. Everybody knows them. Let's head off. No, no. I don't care if it's the same seven guys that know this thing inside and out. We're going to say them, right? And we're going to say them because they're important. And I've made it my mission this year to, if I get asked to cue, uh, that I'm only going to talk about our five core principles. Or I'm going to talk about a chapter in Free to Lead. Or I'm going to talk about our mission statement. Because we do get at times just saying them. I'm, I'm glad we're saying them. But why are we saying them this way? Why do we have our cadence this way? Because when you lead in the cadence, and you lead it the right way, there are guys that look at you and go, all right, all right, he's got this. Right? You call it the wrong name, 
you, you don't have this thing planned out very well. We're trying to build leaders, right? And I, even though it's on point, I mean, there are a lot of guys that can lead, but that doesn't make you a leader. We're trying to build leaders, right? And if you want to be a leader of this group, there's a certain way to do things. And you want to take that certain way to do things into your life, whether it's at home, work, into your communities, and do those things. And so when, when you have a group of guys like this that look up to you and say, okay, what are we doing today? And you do it the right way. You get a lot of guys that appreciate that. And uh, I know why, like my first cue, I think I ran through it two or three times, make sure I had it right, make sure the timing was right. And when you see guys put that type of effort in, you know that you're building a leader, right? Absolutely. I, um, and I, I couldn't agree more. You know, I think, um, I, I think uh, Tony might have to run here. He's got to catch a, catch a flight. But, but one of the things, Khakis, that I think is, you know, it's like this behind the scenes thing, right? That if, if we just over time became lackadaisical on those principles and on the, the way we do things, um, it wouldn't be the same as it is today. You know, I think like being able to maintain those things over time and continue to do Q schools and, and teach the new guys why we do what we do. I mean, it's, it's extremely valuable. Um, and cause, and cause we get, we get, a, you know, you, you look at it and our, it is a wide variety of, of guys from an athletic perspective, a lot of different economic perspectives, a lot of different spiritual perspectives. And so we're trying to build every single one of those, right? We're trying to help them in all areas. And so when you have someone who probably did not play even high school sports or even sports that is standing in a group of guys, some who are professional athletes, right? Some who play college sports, some are still active in other things. And this guy's looking around going, you're going to do what I say today. Everybody goes, yep, we are. That's an amazing thing to me, right? That yeah. everybody gets to be the captain, right? Everybody. In fact, not only does everybody get to be the captain, we push you to be the captain, <laughs> right? It's, it's such an incredible thing. You can't imagine going into your local gym and say, I want to lead aerobics class today, right? Or going into your office and saying, I'm calling in a meeting and that's what we're going to do today, right? So this opportunity that we provided that we push onto others uh, to first lead and then be leaders, right? But you've got to lead before you can be a leader, right? And I think we not only allow that to happen, we push it. Yeah. Well, what's cool too is like the, you know, the, so Q source talks about the leadership development plan or process and, you know, they talk about apprenticeship and schooling and then they talk about, um, opportunities, right? And so it's so it's like you you go out, you do the Q school, and you kind of show guys here's here's how it's done, and here's a schedule that's full of opportunities, right, for you to just apply what we're what we're teaching. And then, you know, I think like you said, as over time, as you get more opportunities, then you build that confidence, and then you start leading in other areas of your life that that you didn't think you could. And I, I think that's. I mean, that's the, that's the plan, but um, it takes guys stepping up to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities. Um, it, and hearing guys talk about the, the anxiety before their VQ, that is so exhilarating to me because I won't have that again. I still get anxious, right? Because you don't want to oversleep, right, at the shed or anything like that. You don't want to just miss your cue. Um, but I still get anxiety, but it's not still that, that VQ or that first cue anxiety of this is the first time, like, you don't sleep, you're there early, you're putting out your cones, you got your lights, you got your winky, you got all these things. Still do all that. I don't quite have the anxieties I do anymore. Like I, can, I can wing a workout. I've done enough three-man grinders that I could wing one. Uh, but to hear other guys talk about how nervous or excited they are, you know, that's a good thing. Because if you're not nervous a little bit, then I don't think you're taking it as important as you should. Um, it's just really cool to, to watch other guys' journeys. And like you mentioned, right, like if like after your VQ, that's all you get. That's why I kind of joke, right? Every every beat down is my VQ. And I, but you can't simulate that feeling. Um, I'm curious for you, you know, what has been 
and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what has been the, the glue or like the thing that you, you keep coming back for? Is it the other guys or is it the coffee or what's, what's been the thing that you're like, man, I'm, I'm going to forever do this because, you know, what's that thing? You know, honestly, it was, it, it truly is all of it, but what kept me coming back, uh, like everyone, like the majority of folks it, is the, was the coffee afterwards. It was so galvanizing from the beginning and then once it became galvanizing from the beginning, it was just like the five core principles. I go have coffee afterwards. And even if it's a short conversation, I'm going to have a conversation with the guys that, that, you know, that I, that I wouldn't have if I just go home, right? And maybe that conversation lasts a little longer that day and we go 20 minutes uh, past or whatever the case. So the workouts certainly were something that, that, being in sports, I love doing workouts and I love pushing myself and testing myself, uh, uh, knowing, you know, how much I've been physically, you know, repaired, you know, both knees, back, neck, shoulder. Um, but I think it was the mental part of me that needed the, the most repair. And that's what F3 gave to me. And so the sad clown syndrome isn't like COVID. You can't get vaccinated for it. Right, the sad clown syndrome can come at any time. You can have an you know, event in your life that just brings it all back. Could be the loss of a loved one, uh, could be the loss of a job, could be your best friend moves, um, whatever the case may be. The sad clown syndrome is it, it's always lurking. It's like the devil, man. It's always lurking. Mm -hmm. We just have to do all these things to keep it out, right? And then also too to recognize when okay, I'm being hit with the sad clown syndrome again. These are the things that, that help me get out of it, whether it's talking to a friend, whether it's showing up for an extra workout, whether it's going for that pre-run knowing you're going to get 30 minutes with probably one guy you can talk to. You can maybe unload a little bit. So it, it, it's knowing those things. So, again, it's the fellowship, but it's also the fellowship within the workout, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just the fellowship afterwards. It's the fellowship in the faith part. It's the fellowship in building the brick builder and a foundation for young men. It's the fellowship that's in the CSOPs. It's the fellowship that's in, you know, at the food pantry. It's the fellowship in giving toys back for the kids at Boys Town. It's all of those things. They're intertwined. None of them sit in a silo separately, right? They all feed into each other in some form, right? And that's the beauty of it. And that we, we don't really... It's hard to just be one part of it. Let's just say all of you want to be is one part of the faith part of it. That'd be really hard to do. Or if all you did was show up for coffee, that'd be really hard to do. Or if all you did was work out and never did anything else, that would be really hard to do and weird. Yeah. That you never once came to coffee and never talked to anybody outside of the workout. Yeah. So, so to, to say that there's one, there, you start with one, you realize, okay, this is what F3 is, fitness. Okay, they do coffee, fellowships, that's separate. Then they have this separate part of faith, and then by the end, it just becomes one. Yeah. You know, one, and I think you you did a really good job describing like they're not they they can't be separate, right? They're just the at least from from my experience, and I think from yours too. If we when we try to do just one, we don't get the full benefit. And I think um, you know the other thing that you that you said just to call out there is like sad clown syndrome. You know, it, it, there's not. Uh, necessarily a, a way to get rid of it right but there is a way to be aware of it and then there are things you can do to to kind of uh, tamper it down right so that you're not always in that state but I think um, even for guys that have been like you and I that have been doing this for a long time you know loved one passes away or some big life event changes and and that sad clown comes back out again and I think um you know, being able to have like a place where you go or guys that you can lean into when the, those things occur, you know, I think F3 would call that the flux, right? The, you know, or life on life's terms, you, you can't predict what's going to happen, but at least now with this structure, you have, you have guys to go to talk about um, those difficulties in life. Whereas before, at least for me, I would just, you know, bury those as far as I could with, with whatever it took to kind of uh, hide them from other people. So that's, I love that, man. Hey, I, I want to um, give you a chance to kind of um, 
represent, you know, we, we ask everybody on the show what uh, what's your least favorite exercise, and a lot of guys have commented about the hydraulic squats. Uh, <laughs> so I want to hear what's what's your least favorite exercise, and then and then what would be your response to a guy that says I don't like hydraulic squats? What the what should those guys be be doing differently? Well, and I don't know why that I, I necessarily like them. I just, I can do them relatively fast as long as it's on a softer surface. And I know I've gotten some crap of doing them on cement before. And But um, I would say, you know, there I, I'll give you two exercises. One, the Murph pull-ups, right? I can't do them. So it's almost a little bit deflating a little bit. And I have my boy Chippets and Slow Pitch that have uh, historically held my legs in the past and helped me do them. Um, but that that's one but one that I can do that I just don't do right are burpees and I know that's near and dear to your heart what uh, but I, I I'm a little bit older than most of the packs and a burpee to me is just dropping down and going that push-up is some actually this CrossFit deal put in and so it's almost unnatural and so for me then to to be able to accommodate or at least meet that we do a hand release burpee which means you go all the way down and i think those who uh will be joining us for the brick builder might uh, end up with, <laughs> with, with those are about oh there you go uh, a little preview i love that mm-hmm. um hey just uh just something that um i was just going to share so so i think you know a couple people have have talked about the just those little moments of encouragement and you mentioned you wrote a letter to Blue Suede, just a note of encouragement. And I, I um, you wrote me a, a note here. Um, and I just, I don't know, this is, this was really special to me. So I just, I wanted to just really quickly thank you. And then just, and then just share with others that, um, you know, beneath this really tough guy is really a, a khaki that has a, a really big heart, but um, you just, just wrote me a letter on a special anniversary of mine and, um, and just said, Hey, I appreciate the, you making these important choices without you making this choice, um, there might not be a khakis. And for that, I'm always grateful for the choices that you made. And, uh, and I love you. Um, and that's pretty cool. And I think it's, you know, for people like you and I, that were, we were the work, the work buddies. Uh, and then to, to like totally flip the script on that and become brothers that can say, you know, and mean it when we say, Hey, I love you, man. And if you need anything, I right. you. Um, so that means a lot. So I think, you know, um, kind of the, one of the last questions we've been asking people is um, for an F and G or, you know, somebody that's newer to, to F3 or, you know, maybe the guy that's, um, if we have anybody that's listening and doesn't come to F3, like, what advice would you give them? What, uh, what would you tell them? I, you know, I would tell them that if the, the first thing people say is it's that it's so early. And it's, and here's what I would just say. It's only early if you're up till midnight. Now, what are you doing from 10 to midnight that's so important that you can't be in bed by 10 and instead of getting up at 6.30, you get up at, you know, 4.45. So those two hours, I ask, what are those two hours? Let's just flip the script for two hours of your life. Take 10 to midnight and stop doing whatever you're doing there and take those and sleep and take the eight, two hours of sleep that you were getting over here and take them to F3. And if you don't tell me you're a better person and the, the noble excuses, no one, those noble excuses that are good things. That's why they're called noble excuses, but no one has ever gone to F3 and become a poor father, become better, less in, in worse shape. Right. Uh, that has performed worse at work that I know of, right? F3 doesn't do any of that stuff. It does the exact opposite. So those noble excuses where you're saying, I got to work or I got to be with family or if I got to do this, if you include F3 on a regular basis, you will do those better. Mm-hmm. That would be my, take those two hours and flip them because that's what I did because those two hours I was spending were horrible two hours. Yeah, I love that. And you, I remember one time at a Q source, you, you said, you know, um, if you, if you get rid of the butts, then you get to experience the and, you know, mm-hmm. so, so if you get rid of the, but it's too early, but it's too cold, you get the, and I'm in better shape and I'm a better friend, father, husband, right. and, and I'm closer to whoever I believe my higher power God is. And I, exactly. 
Love that, man. Okay. Uh, well, hey, I, uh, I just, I appreciate you taking time. Um, there's a lot more stories and things that I'm sure you could share, but I would just encourage guys, you know, um, if, if you need a brother or you have uh, stuff on your heart, Khakis is a, is a really uh, solid, high-impact man, and, and I know he's always been there to listen to me when I need somebody to talk to, and if you see him at a workout, don't be intimidated. Uh, you know, he comes off tough, but he's got a really, really big heart, and I think, um, yeah. What if you would just uh, take us out uh, with the old name All right. This is Joe Schaffner, 52, khakis. Khakis, respect. <laughs>